All right, good afternoon. Um, happy Tuesday, if there is such a thing. Um, on, I'll start off with a up, humanitarian update on Syria, where our colleagues uh, from the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs inform us that we have now completed the 200th cross-border mission to northwest Syria since the first interagency uh, visit to Idlib uh, that took place in February 14th uh, following the earthquake. Uh, that hit that month. Uh, during the mission that took place on Sunday and crossed through Bab al-Salam, the World Health Organization personnel conducted monitoring visits to health facilities and WHO warehouses in Afrin as Azaz in the Northwest, and they also met with their local partners. We and our humanitarian partners are continuing to deliver urgently needed aid through Bab al-Salam and al Ray crossings. Today, 17 trucks carrying humanitarian shelter items from the International Organization for Migration and the UN Refugee Agency crossed into Northwest via Bab al Salam. Uh, turning to Sudan, Martin Griffiths, the head of the Humanitarian Affairs Department, today announced an allocation of 20 million U.S. dollars from the Central Emergency Response Fund to assist the growing number of people in need in Sudan. Civilian displacement is continuing at an alarming rate and has now topped 4.5 million people, and that includes 3.6 million people who are internally displaced. This new allocation builds on previous support, bringing the total SURF funding for this crisis to $60 million. While humanitarian needs soar in Sudan, the funding remains critically low, with 26 percent of the $2.6 billion asked for but for the humanitarian response plan having been received so far. Quick uh, travel to announce by Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of the Peace Operations Department, and Atul Kare, the Under Secretary General for um, Operational Support. They are both traveling to Islamabad in Pakistan tomorrow to participate in the UN Peacekeeping Ministerial Preparatory Meeting on Safety and Security that is being co-hosted by the governments of Pakistan and Japan. They will be joined by representatives from over 35 member states for discussions about the challenges faced by peacekeeping operating, uh, peacekeepers operating in increasingly complex and insecure environments. While extensive measures are already in place to protect peacekeepers and ensure they can carry out their mandates effectively, more support is needed to harness new technologies, counter the threat of improvised explosive devices, and strengthen medical evacuation capabilities as well as mental health services. The meeting in Islamabad is one of a series taking place ahead of the ministerial meeting on peacekeeping, which should take place in Ghana uh, on the 5th and 6th of December. Um, just to give you a quick update, as uh, I know you've been curious regarding the activities of Miroslav Yencha, our Assistant Secretary General for Europe, Central Asia, and Americas, uh, in the Department of Peace uh, and uh, Political Affairs and Peace uh, Building, uh, and his activities in Cyprus. Uh, I can tell you that he uh, visited Cyprus from the 27th to the 29th of August, which is today, as part of the UN's continued engagement with the parties to explore common ground on the way forward on the Cyprus issue. He met separately with Greek Cypriot leader Nikos Christodoulidis excuse me, and the Turkish Cypriot leader Ersin Tatar, as well as their representatives. Recent developments on the ground and operational issues related to the mandate of UNFASIP were also discussed. He also visited uh, the Sector 4 of the peacekeeping mission, meeting with UN peacekeepers, expressing his appreciation for their professionalism and dedicated service. He also paid a visit to the Committee on Missing Persons. Mr. Yensha will now go on to Ankara for meetings with authorities there on the 30th and 1st of September. And uh, uh, an update from our country team in Iran. The UN Population Fund yesterday signed an agreement with health authorities to provide midwifery and nursing skill-based education to Afghan women and girls who are currently in Iran. Our UN resident coordinator there, Stefan Preisner, said this was an important step forward in fostering inclusiveness and empowering those who have been forced to leave their homes in Afghanistan. The initiative, led by UNFPA with the World Health Organization, the UN Refugee Agency and the International Organization for Migration are there to support the government's efforts to address the needs of Afghan refugees. 
UNFPA will also um, support services for people in vulnerable situations, including access to reproductive health services and HIV prevention. According to the UN Refugee Agency, over 3.4 million refugees and displaced persons, Iran has become the second largest refugee hosting country globally after Turkey. And Iran is uh, currently hosting over 1.1 million Afghan refugees. And today is the International Day Against Nuclear Tests. In his message, the Secretary General said, on this day, the world speaks with one voice to end this destructive legacy. He calls on all countries that have not yet ratified the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty to do so immediately. Uh, I now take your uh, questions. Edie, and then Deji. Uh, thank you, Steph. First, on Cyprus, mm -hmm. um, you gave a, a long list of meetings. Did Was there any progress on um, the disputed road in the buffer zone that Turkish Cypriots were uh, trying to build? And, and does the Secretary General have any plans to try and meet again with the Greek and Turkish Cypriot uh, leaders. I will, we will keep you updated as to whatever meetings may happen uh, on the sidelines of the GA. Uh, no updates on that, uh, on that situation as far as I'm aware. Deji. Uh, first, uh, it's been reported that uh, the special representative, Mr. Hans Grundberg, was in, uh, is in Yemen today. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have any information on his visit to Yemen? No, we've... Uh, we've uh, We've asked, I have yet to receive uh, But he, he is in Yemen, right? I, I will check for you. Okay. So um, my, my next uh, topic is about antiquities. It's been reported that, that, that more than 2,000 antiquities have been, have been stolen from uh, uh, British, the British Museum. Um, do you think if, if the museum could not protect the safety of those antiquities, should, should they be returned to, to the country where they come from I'm not going to comment on that particular situation uh, I mean I, it's not I, that's a question really aimed at uh, UNESCO I do hope that the the theft as any theft is fully investigated by uh, by the police which brings me which brings to the last question on the the International Day Against Nuclear Test. Mm -hmm. You just said that the world should speak with one voice. I, I just checked all those treaties, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, New START Treaty, JCPOA. I mean, we got so many treaties. In general, why it looks the proliferation, the risk of nuclear proliferation is even worse? and and if you ask countries to rat ratify those treaties, what can, can the UN to persuade them to do so? Well, I mean, we hope that uh, the logic against the, the use and the proliferation of nuclear weapons is pretty clear and basic into itself, right? And then one shouldn't have to convince anyone uh, not to use uh, nuclear weapons. I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's really stating the obvious. If to some, and then we'll go, uh, then we'll stay here, and then we'll go online. We have a few questions. I'll come back to you, Edie. Uh, Stefan, the Algerian Foreign Minister, uh, Ahmed Attaf, uh, proposed today an uh, initiative to resolve crisis in Niger with six months transition period led by civilians. Um, any comments and were there any uh, contacts between the Algerian foreign ministry and the UN? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, one, of, one of the many reasons I was a little late uh, coming in is I was checking up on these uh, reports. We have indeed received a letter uh, from the Algerian foreign minister a short while ago, and we're looking at it and we're studying it right now. And do you, like, did you have time to look? Uh, no, I mean, we it? literally just uh, received it, and I was talking to colleagues upstairs. They're, they're looking at it right now. Okay. Uh, Murad. Thank you, Stephen. The 
detention of Al Jazeera journalists in Egypt, Rabia Sheikh and Baha Ibrahim, has exceeded now the pre-trial period that allowed in the Egyptian law, and also extended many times without charge, without trial. You expressed before many times also your concern on this, and Al Jazeera, in a statement, urged the UN and the other organizations to demand their immediate release? Well, I mean, our, our position has, hasn't changed. Uh, I think the Secretary General has been very clear in expressing his concern about the situation in many parts of the world, of a shrinking civic space, shrinking space for journalists. And in that sense, we, we echo the, the words of Volker Turk, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, who called uh, for the immediate release from any arbitrary detention of journalists who are just trying to do their work. Yep. And the SCG met yesterday with the Lebanese foreign minister and Israeli mm -hmm. uh, defense uh, minister. And there was no readout. I mean, it. it Shouldn't come as a surprise. I think the, the both meetings, which came at the request of both the Lebanese and and, and the Israeli, uh, focused on the renewal of the um, of the UN peacekeeping mission in in Lebanon, which is now in front of the Security Council. I, my understanding is that a vote uh, is imminent. Um, so that was the the substance of the meeting. The SCG report on Unitimes is due today. Do uh -huh. you know if the, the report sent to the members? Uh, if it's due today, we usually try to keep our, uh, our deadline, though uh, there's still a few hours left in what I would consider today. So, uh, Michelle, then Amélie. I'm good, thanks, Steph. Okay, great. Amélie? Yeah, hi, thanks, Steph. Uh, just a follow up on Syria. You mentioned uh, Bab el Salam and uh, El Rey, but no mention of Babalawa. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's been three weeks now that you announced an agreement with Damas, uh, Damascus. So, um, what's going on with uh, Babalawa crossing? Thanks. Yeah. You're, you're not mistaken in any of your assumptions. Uh, what is going on is that we're still trying to work out. Uh, the operational details uh, on how to make, uh, put the agreement uh, to work, so to speak. Edith, and then Benno. Um, another Syria question. Um, first, um, there have been um, reports that a lot of the survivors of the earthquake in Syria feel like the UN and Others had not done anything to help them. And there are protests in the South about economic conditions. Does uh, the Secretary General have any comment on this? And is the UN preparing to try to step up assistance to try and address these issues? Well, on, on, the, on your latter part, on, on the demonstrations, uh, we, and uh, along with Gare Pedersen, have been following this situation with, with concern. Uh, it is critical that it, anywhere people be allowed to demonstrate uh, freely and peacefully uh, in line with their, their rights uh, to do so. Uh, on the aid, I mean, we, we of course understand the, the, the frustration of, of people who have suffered great trauma and great loss, whether it's an earthquake or other natural, other kinds of disasters. Uh, but I can tell you that we are determined to continue uh, to assist the people of Syria, uh, whether in the Northwest or in the areas that are under government uh, control. I mean, I, I've just updated you today about the 200th uh, trucks missions that has gone gone through. Uh, we we took the the actions that we needed to do in advance of the potential closure. We pre pre uh, we pre positioned uh, a lot of a lot of supplies, and we are as uh, determined as ever to continue helping uh, the people of Syria. Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, you already criticized the anti-LGBTQ law in Uganda a few 
weeks or months ago. Now, according to Reuters, um, a 20-year-old is the first one to be prosecuted under the new law. He faces the death penalty. Has the SG any um, on comment on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I answered that question yesterday. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, all right. Uh, on that note, uh, Paulina, you are up. Well, I was. Most it was a full room, too. <laughs> <laughs>